Hello and welcome to my channel. So the plan for today is to finish this axis number one and to test it and see how it works, if it works. So let's get started. As you can see, I have the new 3D printed parts and we're going to use them. From the last video, I changed mainly two things. I changed the pulley and the idler in order to tension this belt. So I made one iteration of the pulley, another iteration of the pulley and another iteration of the pulley. And afterwards I made this one. And the same story was with idler. The first one, the second one, the third one and the fourth was perfect. So this is, should be the base of the robot. But it does not look like base for the moment. It's difficult to fix this one. So that's why I 3D printed this huge piece. So this piece will go here and like this it looks like base and we can fix this base with the holes here and on the other side. So let's install this cover. To install this cover first of all I will install embedded nuts. One goes here and another one goes here. The next I need to dismount these screws. And now this cover goes on top. Ooh, great! And we need to fix it with uh, plenty screws here and one screw here and another one here. Now the screws on the sides. Nice! Everything looks great. There is no any strange sound when I rotate the motor. So there is no friction with the case. And now it can stand. It does not stand very well because this bolt is proud from the surface. But we can just replace this bolt. Yeah, looks nice. Now you can fix it with screws here and here. And in the middle of this actuator there is this hole. This one. So we can use it to pass the cables. So like this all the cables from the robot arm will go through this hole and will come out through this one. This should be very convenient. Yeah. I have found these two screws. So they have smaller head as this one. So I'm gonna replace them. And second one here. And this is perfect now, nothing is sticks out. Nice! Great! Next we need to take care of the encoder. So this is encoder, this is a magnet for the encoder. And this is a glue which we're going to use to glue this magnet here. Let's unmount this plastic screw. This is our magnet. And it should go just in the middle. So I will put a little bit of glue here. And now the magnet goes in the middle. Nice. Now I will put it back on the motor. Perfect. Now we will mount encoder itself. So this encoder is going to be fixed on this plate and afterwards this plate goes here. So encoder goes like this but I need to unsolder these pins and also solder the wires to the encoder. So I unsoldered this connector and now I need to solder a small wire in order to choose 3.3 volts power supply. And now we can solder the output wires which will go to the O drive. For the encoder cable I will use uh, this cable. This is uh, actually the cable from the old uh, mouse. So the black cable goes to ground. The red cable goes to the 3.3 volts. The yellow cable goes to the B and the orange cable goes to the A. This is how it looks when the soldering is done. And now we can install this encoder on this encoder holder. Like this. And now we can fix it with the tiny M2 screws. Nuts go here, screw go here. This is how it looks when it's fixed with the screws. You see that the encoder chip is right in the middle. 
Yeah, and now what is left is to install it on the axis number one. And we need to install this encoder here. So encoder goes here. And we put back the screws. On these two holes I will use smaller washers and also plastic washers. Like this I'm sure that I'm not gonna touch the contacts on this board. Great, encoder installed. We are done with the axis number one and now we need to connect everything to the O drive. So we need to connect the motor and the encoder. And this is our O drive. But it's quite fragile like this, so it's better to use the case. And I designed and 3D print this case. So the O drive goes here. Here there is a place for the braking resistor and afterwards everything is closed like this. O drive goes here, cables goes here and here, braking resistor, this one close and you even have access to the USB port. And with the plastic zip ties we can fix the cables. Somewhere here. Let's fix this resistor. Now we would need to do some soldering. I mean not some soldering, I mean a lot of soldering. Let's start with soldering braking resistor. Now power cable. On the other side of the power cable we will put this XT60 connector. Perfect. I have this cable which I'm going to use as a data cable. So this is DMX and I'm going to use it as a RES-232 cable. Now I will fix these two cables with the zip ties. Great. And now we need to take care of these cables. Motor cable, encoder cable. Soldering is finished, now we need to assemble this box and I should not forget to put the heatsink. Now let's assemble this box. Looks nice. And so this is our actuator and this is our drive in the super nice and beautiful box. Now we can connect it and see how it works. This is electronics uh, from one of my last video. So from the video where I started to build uh, this 7 degrees of freedom affordable brushless robotic arm. And this electronic has power supply for the O drive, power supply for the Tinzi, Tinzi itself and some joysticks. And of course big red button to stop the robot revolution. So the wires, power and data cable. And now we can switch it on and hope that everything is gonna work and nothing is gonna explode. This is the motor calibration, encoder calibration, rotates to one direction and stops. This means that there is a problem. Ha! Now I need to find out where is the problem. And I think I found the problem. The problem was in Tinzi. Because this program I wrote for the two motors and here there is only one motor. So I disabled the second uh, part of this uh, program where I calibrate the second motor. So let's try it. Switch on the power. This motor calibration, encoder calibration, it rotates in one direction and it rotates in another direction. It goes back. So this is a motor in the closed loop control and now the motor holds its position. So if I try to rotate it, it comes back. And by the way, now we can see the backlash and there is some backlash, of course, because we use the plastic gears. So this is normal. And now let's try to move it with the joystick. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Great. It works. I like it. Great base for the robot arm. And it's also powerful. What else you can dream of? Haha. <laughs> Today we finished the assembly of the axis number one. And before we did the assembly of the axis number four and axis number five. 
Now for the robotic arm is the left axis number 2, axis number 3, axis number 6 and axis number 7. And we will take care of them in the future video. And in order not to miss these videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can also support my channel by liking this video, by sharing this video in your social media and by putting several comments. Another way of supporting my channel is via PayPal or Patreon, all the links in the description to this video. And here are the people who supported me on Patreon. This is the best people, thanks to them I'm building this and thanks to them I will continue. So the plan for the nearest future is to make affordable 7 degrees of freedom robotic arm, capable robotic arm, and afterwards to do some application using AI. And like this we will bring robotic revolution closer. As usual the files for this project is gonna be available for some of my patrons. So if you need them you can go become my patron, download them, use them, modify them, etc, etc, etc. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.